Ali, my name is Robang. I'm from the beautiful islands of Palau, and I'll be talking about my research I did for the summer, which is investigating how turbidity impacts Staphylococcus aureus survival in fresh and brackish waters. What is Staphylococcus aureus? Um, it is a gram-positive coccus bacteria, and it it can become a opportunistic pathogen, which is a infection caused by pathogen that take advantage of um, opportunity not normally available, like uh, weaken the immune system. Oh. Uh, it is the common cause of uh, skin, skin infection and can lead uh, to worse or life-threatening diseases like the ones mentioned on the screen. Uh, before we get into this, who here has had a staph infection or knows someone who has staph infection? Whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you know if you got it from like water contacts or water? No. Okay. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> right. So studies here in Hawaii have found that increased water contact can lead to uh, increased uh, chance of staph infection. Uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders such as ourselves, uh, us working in the low east, swimming, okay, we have higher risk of uh, staph infections. When our uh, staff concentrations high, uh, they're usually high after storms where there's uh, low salinity and then the cloudiness in the water, which is the, the, the turbidity, uh, tur turbidity, sorry. So my question for this, I want to uh, investigate how turbidity uh, influence the survivability of staff concentrations in water. And I hypothesize that staff survives in um, waters that ha survive longer period of times in waters that are more turbid. Uh, here are my freshwater samples that I collected here in uh, Ulupohel and the beautiful Kawai Nui down there. Uh, the spring water was my low turbidity, and then Loi was my high turbidity, and the, the pipes that we used to rinse ourselves after Hana is my intermediate or medium turbidity. These are my brackish water samples that I collected from Kaha Canal. You can see the different levels of uh, turbidity shown in the, in the screen. Well, so what I did for this project is that I used five milliliters of the water samples, filtered, th filtered, filtered them to 0.5, uh, 45 um, micrometer membranes uh, and cultured media them. And uh, uh, basically what that means, you put it on the agar plate and then you put them in the incubator and they are in the incubator for 24 hours. Then I counted the staff colonies after 24 hours. Here's an example of my plate after incubation. The, you can see the purple ones. Those are the staff areas that I studied this summer. And the other colors are other species of staff that I didn't. So here are my results. This is my initial uh, concentration of staff for both fresh and brackish waters. My x-axis is the my, my x-axis is the turbidity and then I have my staff concentrations as my y-axis. We can see that it's significantly different across the turbidities. Breaking it down to brackish and fresh, um, we can see that it's still different it's significantly different across the turbidities, uh, even though these two are similar in numbers or like close in numbers, they are still significantly different from, one, uh, from each other. Here's how my 
over old data. So to orient, orient you guys through the figure, um, I have my time days in um, the x-axis and my staff concentration in the y-axis, my brackish and my fresh. The purple one and the brown one are my low and the blue one and my green one are my medium turbidity and my blue and my red are my high turbidities. We can see that it decreases over time and it shows that it's significantly, it's significantly different from each other. Here's the, here's the table of my T90s of each turbidity. Uh, we can see that after five days, after five days, my, my, my low turbidity of the Kaha Canal is reached T90. And for 18 days, for the fresh one, it reached T90. And for the medium ones, uh, we got the 11 days where it reached T90 and 20 when it reached T90. And T90 is the time uh, time required for it to, uh, for 90% for 90, 90 of the cells that become inactive. Yeah. For the high ones, it's not really accurate. The, it, it didn't reach T90 because I was running out of samples. Uh, so I stopped last week with the, this as calculated as my T90. So yeah. In conclusion, uh, results show that staff, sorry, results show that staff uh, uh, survive stronger in waters that are more turbid. And I think it's because of the biofilm formation, which is a, um, a, a slimy layer that, that acts as a uh, resistant layer to protect the bacteria. Most bacteria have, have it, and this is a, uh, it's like a house for the staff. It, it, protects, it protects the staff from any other outside from destroying it. And the, 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 other, the other thing that uh, I think that staff survives more in turbid waters is the nutrients from the particles. So um, overall, uh, I just wanna say that be careful when you have cuts don't go into low ease or turbid waters. Like my advisor or mentor that I worked with, Maria Stedman, which who is not here, she she always mentioned that if you see brown, don't turn the turn around. Yeah. Uh, thank you to these people and um, people from Lapu uh, of Lap Lapu or Frank uh, and everyone who. Uh, help me make this project. Uh, help me with this project, and uh, thank you for listening.